Hello everyone, it's your friend Kevin with another Kev's Vibe of the Day where I bring you a message from an oracle deck. One that sets you on your way and uh, sends you off with love. So let's get right to the cards. There we go. So today I drew the P Miracle of Prayer, which is represented by Archangel Sandalfon. Now Archangel Sandalfon in this deck particularly, which is authored by Kyle Gray with images by Jason McCready. In this deck, Archangel Sandalfon is considered to be the mailman to God. And the prayer that goes with the card says, Thank you, Sandalfon, for delivering my prayers to heaven. Now it's said that Sandalfon, along with his twin brother Metatron, are part of the star beings, known also to be connected with Archangel Orion. So we're blessed to have a message from Sandalfon today, who says, it's a little bit of a lesson in the message, basically saying that typically when folks pray, they pray for hope in the future. They pray that this will happen for the best. They pray that that will happen for the best. They pray for blessings in the presence of adversity and contrast. Sandalfon has come to remind you that indeed your prayers are all sent up to the divine, the divine force, but also to remind you that when you are in the space and the place of prayer, that instead of asking for this and asking for that in the typical desperation way, that you know and understand that all that you're looking for, all that you're wanting and all the answers that you're seeking have already been foretold upon you. They've already been answered. It's that instant. So now I'm hearing you say, well, if they've already been answered, if they've already been given, if they've already been granted these prayers to God, then how come we still feel this way, that way or the other way? Or how come we're not realising or how come we're not generating it? It's about lining up your feeling with the same feeling of grace, of gratitude, of blessings, of already being in the receiving part of what you're looking for, what you're asking for. So just like affirmations, when we work with affirmations and an affirmation is a statement of I am, affirming it. People tend to typically not make affirmations when they're in, the, they don't need to, if that makes sense. So for example, for me to say, I am the glory of God, I am the love of God, I am the abundance of God, I am the prosperity of God. If I'm saying that, when my mindset and my feeling and my general way of being is the opposite, I'm going to have this contrasting way of being. For example, we're not going to ask for things we don't want. We're always going to be asking for things we want and we want more of. Well, taking it a step further, it is really about getting into the feeling of what it is we're asking for. How can I put this? If you're looking for strength, you have to see yourself as that strong person. Feel the strength within you to accept it, ask for it and get it. Now, things on the spiritual way, if you can see it and you can feel it, you're going to manifest it because that's the whole point. 
And if you're still really fuzzy about, well, how in the world that sounds so ridiculous, blah, blah, blah. You've got to get into the law of attraction by Esther and Abraham Hicks. It's pretty easy to follow. They've written countless, not just Esther Hicks through Abraham, but many folks, um, Dr. Wayne Dwyer, um, many, many books. One of my teachers, Kyle Gray, and now a new group of teachers I've been introduced to, mentors, are all saying the same thing. When you look for the prayers, when you look to say, we're asking for the faith. You have to have that faith that it's already being presented to you. The question is, are you looking and are you listening? And do you really, truly want to know? Everything that we do in a physical way has been taught to us, learned by us and presented to us through the culture that we've come to understand and realize like um, where you grow up and the way you grow up and the influences you had growing up in those formidable years as a as a person and then you mature there's a maturity that sets up it's a bit like the maturity of anything the trees landscape the maturity of the earth and even if you look at the four seasons, we're in autumnal season right now, where the leaves are beginning to turn. They're beginning to sort of set themselves up to go dormant by realising and looking at where their life has been this year and how to set themselves up well for next year. If you go to any garden centre, they're telling you that the autumnal season is about planting making the ground ready for the winter and then eventually the spring. But most people don't really think about that. They wait till early part of spring. It's lovely. And here we have, you know, Easter and let's put out flowers. La la la. Life is really all about being centered. And for you to connect with divine with angels, with archangels, with the spiritual world. It's about practicing on a daily basis and being in that space of receiving and knowing that you're blessed and being grateful for the blessings. And as you get into this faith of, wow, Thank you for presenting with whatever. I mean, there's many things we get in life, in, in a daily life. The food. There are very few people that give thanks for the blessings of the food that they're about to eat. We do it as children. We do it when we're little. Props on Sundays when we sit down with the family for a Sunday lunch, we do it. We don't do it all the time. Run into a convenience store and pick up an apple or a snack or bag of chips or a coffee or a soda we don't really sit in our vehicle and pop the lid on the soda and say thank you for providing me with this we just guzzle it down we're thirsty it doesn't make sense so sending up prayers usually comes when there's some things that we don't feel is right or we don't think is wrong or we think oh my goodness this has gone wrong it's got to be right indeed yes they get answered the miracle of prayer is definitely there. But it's also a reminder that everything that's being provided to us all the time is a result of what we're asking for, what we're praying for, what we're hoping for. And it brings me to a little bit of a, I can call it a naughty note, if you will. Things are happening all the time. Tough things, difficult things. We're subjected to an awful lot of negative press. Um, people dealing with and being in the feeling of lack, the feeling of scarcity. Well, it's to show 
and to look at where you are already abundant, where you are already free, where you are already experiencing great gifts of this life. Whether it's a warm bed, clean sheets, washing machine to wash it and dry it, a lovely home, a great yard, the ability to listen to birds, to go out into nature. Even the gift and the miracle are literally smiling somebody who perhaps has not had anyone smile at them. Or putting your arm around somebody or just literally, you know, bowing to them, honouring them, seeing them. Those are abundant. That feeling of kindness, that feeling of love, that feeling of it's just that beautiful exchange is abundant. And now at a time where we're faced with what seems to be the opposing forces, if you will, the opposite of that, the entitlement, the feeling that I want and I want and I want and there's nothing there, I can't get it, scarcity. That's not the feeling of abundance. That's not the feeling of prosperity. That's not the feeling, the miracle of praying for all of the goodness that's happening. We have to get in the space of joining up with each other and creating healing in a way where people need to be healed. Because there's an awful lot of souls and spirits that have decided that this world that they're now living in isn't one they want to be part of and they're leaving. Leaving in the hundreds and the thousands. You may know of someone and a family that is experiencing the loss of a spirit that was in a physical body. I felt it. The more I practice a daily spiritual practice and the more I connect with spirit world, I feel it even more. Um, even when a person will share with me that they lost a cousin or a sister or a friend or someone they know, I feel that person's spirit. And there's a quick message that will come in. Please tell them I'm okay. Please tell them I've I am on this side. Please tell them it's all good. I'm with this one, that one, the other one. Serious. All right. I don't want to bring this vibe of the day down. I'm meant to tell you what's lifting you up. Um, but listen, if you've got prayers, make them positive. Give thanks and gratitude for it. Feel the love of what you've already received. And then ask your prayer in a loving, grateful way. Really. Seriously, now it's time to read from this book. Let's see if I've got, um, let's see if we're on. Yeah, we're on. There we go. Um, I was looking for my timer at the top of the screen. Um, we are on today, the 12th of October. Trust yourself to know what's right. Sometimes we find ourselves with people or in places we can't adapt to. No matter how hard we try, no matter how much we want it to, it just doesn't feel right. doesn't fit. <laughs> We're trying to jam the proverbial square peg into a round hole. Only what we're trying to do or jam isn't a block of wood, it's us. Sometimes in situations like these, we revert to old ways of thinking and believing and feeling. There must be something wrong with me if I don't like this. If this isn't working, if I try harder, control my emotions, jam a little harder, this square peg, me, will fit. Those are the times we may begin to feel confused, weak, scattered, uncertain. We abandoned ourselves. Our emotions disappear, our passions wane. We may begin sleeping, escaping, drifting further and further away. Our soul begins squirming in reaction to what we're trying to force ourselves to do. We may become physically ill. It's as though we're allergic to our surroundings. Sometimes we may feel we may spend years in this process, depending on what we're afraid to face or what we're afraid to lose. 
Other times this process may only last a few hours or days. We can take as much time as we need to listen to and take care of ourselves. But if we love ourselves, we won't torture ourselves for long because we know we don't have to. If a place or a person or situation doesn't work for us, that's okay. We don't have to punish ourselves. We don't have to go away from ourselves. We can leave the situation. Trust yourself, your body and your soul to know what's right for you. Learn to feel the energy of a situation, a place or person. If something feels right, you may feel harmony mentally, emotionally and spiritually. If it doesn't feel right, don't abandon yourself. Leave the situation. Try something else until you do feel right. You may not always know at first when a thing, place or person is wrong for you. But if you listen to your body and trust your heart, you can learn to tell when it's right. I like that. There are times when we grow voluntarily at our own choice, wanting something different to occur and wanting to be different. And there are times when it happens automatically. Growth is a choice. Change is what is always going to happen. Physical changes, whether it's to the body, the health, the environment, the job, the road, the house up the street, is going to happen no matter what. It always does. Between August and November, in the Northern Hemisphere, the environment changes. Animals change what they do. People change what they wear. The weather changes how it hits the earth. The atmosphere is changing. And right now we're in this huge, big change. So you're either in the mindset of what's next for me or you're in the planning stage of setting the stage for what you want to have happen or you're in the regretful stage of what you wanted did not happen but you see the change and changes are still occurring. So my nugget, my message for you, all of you, is to look at where you might be stuck. Is it in that other people are changing and making choices and you're not? So you're either envious or fearful of being left out or not sure what you should do, which is really, I think, quite powerful. Or you're in the midst of planning and making changes that you're not absolutely sure are the right ones. The square peg in the round hole. Again, that's quite fabulous, quite fantastic, because it's teaching you. You've got this push back. You've got this step back. You've got the sit back and relax. And then just let in what fills you up with those joyful, happy feelings. It might not be material. You know, typically we run for material things, better car, better clothes, cleaner house, less clothes. We might do physically things to make us feel better. But then when we feel really good, we feel really great, we're moving, we're working. That's the feeling you want from everything. That's the feeling you want all the time. And if you've got friends and family that you know that are not there, two things are going on. You can be the catalyst just by how you are to show them how things could be. Or you could be the coach that shows them 
These are the steps I took. Happy to help you, but you've got to do the work. Or you can be the person that looks at somebody else, which I've seen. Well, who in the world do they think they are? All that in the bag of chips. It's judgment. Needless to say, this is really about you. This is about you, where you are, in your world, making choices and changes that work for you, that you want, because this really is your life. So if you're looking to find that great relationship, that super person that fills your life and fills your heart, you've got to be that for yourself. You've got to realise your top shelf. I'm in the VIP lounge. I'm not going to accept anything less than what I have to offer someone else. It isn't that you're on the back foot. It isn't that you're putting up with something or someone simply because right now you don't have that someone. It's about recognising that you are that someone and that you can have your choice of people to spend your life with. But they've got to fit as you fit. All right. Now, with that said, it's time to meditate. I'm, I'm asking to see if there's a spirit that wants to come. You know, sometimes they just pop in. I like it when they just pop in and surprise me. So eyes down, palms up, and get into that mode of where your breath is. <laughs> feel like doing a little prayer before we start. Thank you, angels, archangels, ascended masters, spirit guides, and all those that have come with love and with joy and with happiness. I am grateful to you that you're reminding me that you're here. And I'm willing to listen and to receive and to share. Bring your attention to where you physically are in your physical environment, in the place that you see, sit right now. Allow yourself to smile broadly and bring in the incredible feeling that you're grateful for what you're grateful for, anything that you feel ecstatic about, grateful for. These are blessings. What are you blessed by? Now bring your mind to the soles of your feet. Press them into the love of Mother Earth. Imagine that the great Mother Earth and her loving ways is taking your feet and grounding them into the love of her heart known as the Gaia Gateway. And imagine that the energy that's coming down from your feet, the toil, the walking, the tiredness, the feeling of the aches and the pains of walking on an earth that seems right now to be in trouble. Think of the love and the strength and the guidance of Mother Earth giving your feet a wonderful foot rub. Feel the tingling energy of this great Mother Earth rising up through the lower leg bone of each leg. Experience the difference between the left leg bones up to the left hip through the left knee joint and feel the Mother Earth take, remove, all of the tiredness, the aching, down in through the Gaia Gateway. Repeat the same on the right leg. You feel the tingling warmth in the left leg. Now feel 
the heaviness, the trapped energy, all of that on the right leg, being absorbed and taken, removed and cleansed by the love of Mother Earth. Move your energy into your tailbone, your sitting bones, the bones that sit under your pelvis, under your buttocks, right at the root of you that includes your legs. And feel this warm embrace that Mother Earth has that she's reminding you of your right to be on the earth, the proud spiritual being that's having a physical experience right now. As you breathe in, bring the strength and grounding of Mother Earth up into your genital area, your second chakra, and see the colour of orange, the colour of creation, and be in the feeling and the gratitude that you are a creative being using all your physical skills, creative thinking, creative organising, all that is created for you, all that is created of you, all that is created by you, is being replenished right now. Breathe in and rise up into your belly area and see the golden colour right around your navel, above your hips, into the lumbar area of your spine. The powerhouse of your body known as solar plexus. Think of this as a physical energy, the physical engine. When the food digests, your biological factory, where all the nourishing foods you've consumed are broken down and the magnificence of the physical body filters out what's not needed and sends throughout your cells what is needed. All the vitamins and minerals all the way through every cell of your body. Continue being aware of this physical body and the energy you have within it. Pull the energy from Mother Earth up into your chest, into your heart, into your heart chakra. And this colour is gleaming green. Allow it to sparkle. Allow this glorious green energy to be faceted, to be filled with love, to be filled with the feeling of emotion, of joy, of great happiness, of great blessings for all the greatness that you are. A reminder that this is where things are felt. This is where your intuition first understands all that is not physical, all that is coming from a higher Source Intelligence. Now begin to feel 
not just the energy and the love from the Mother Earth rising up within you, but now begin to feel the energy from Source Energy, from Father in the Sky, who is energetically sending down rays of light that permeate the top of your head, that send and cast its energy down through the crown of your head into your third eye center, down through your throat, into your heart. Lift your attention up into your throat, into your face, into the brow area, and see this area as blue and the various shades of blue going from the beautiful deep greenish blue up through the lightest softest sky blue and as you rise up through your brow area imagine both your eyes like sparkling sapphires and the two of them together create an opening in your brow, your third eye center. And now as you move your attention up to the crown of your head, the very top of your head, where your angels are circling, your spirit guides are circling. Angels to your left, angels to your right. And in their hands, they have your halo, your crown. A crown that has never left you, it's always been part of you. And as they lay their hands around the ring of this crown and place it, adjust it to the top of your head. Feel the great energy that gets created and generated from it. Above the crown is the stellar gateway, the gateway to the infinite vortex, field, space, Akashic area of you. Feel this energy, your direct connection to the source of creation. Using this portal, using the hands and the love of your ascended masters and angels to wash down over you, to wash down inside of you. So every cell of your physical body, over three trillion are glistening and gleaming, renewing, replenishing. Allow yourself to breathe and bathe in this glorious light, in this glorious energy, burning off and removing, cleansing and releasing any and all vibrational energies that no longer serve you and that stand in your way of love. Allow this energetic light to be so bright 
that it removes, releases all negativity, toxicity, lower vibrational energies, cuts and removes anything and everything that keeps you from your highest good. From the Gaia gateway below your feet, the stellar gateway above your head, your chakras, your energy center, your physical being is now aligned Bring your hands to prayer at heart center. And keep this feeling of being balanced and aligned, alive with you. Lift your thumb knuckles to third eye center and together we bow and say namaste. Mm. Thank you, my friends. Until next time, be blessed, be grateful. Lots of love. Bye.